today I'll be reacting to how good was Magic Johnson actually. In my opinion, Magic Johnson is the greatest point guard in NBA history, so let's go right into the video. As a five-time NBA champ, three-time league MVP, Hall of Famer, and the straw that stirred one of basketball's most famous styles of play, how good was Magic Johnson really? Humble beginnings. Magic's childhood was far from lavish. He was born in Lansing, Michigan to an assembly worker and a school janitor. Since Magic had six siblings and three half-siblings, his parents had to work extra hard to provide for the family. Realizing his family needed him, Magic rose to the occasion and often chipped in by joining his father on his garbage collection route. His parents' work ethics were not the only thing to rub off on Magic during his childhood, as he picked up on another integral aspect from their lives, a love for the game of basketball. Magic trained with his dad night and day, teaching him the ins and outs of the sport. Magic was good, real good. It quickly became clear that Magic had a future in basketball and a chance to give his family a better life. As a ninth grader, he shattered the city record for most points in a junior high game by putting up 48. Then as a... What? <laughs> What? I have respect for Magic, though. I, I think when the guy said when he was younger, he used to be helping his father, like, with his job. Respect. Respect for that. But 48 points as a ninth grader? Did he say junior high, though? Maybe maybe that was just from back then. 48 points in the ninth grade is insane. But did he say junior high, though? I thought ninth grade was high school. Maybe it was different back in the day. I don't know. Wait, let me go back. I thought he said junior high. Because ninth grade is in high school. Magic had a future in basketball and a chance to give his family a better life. As a ninth grader, he shattered the city record for most points in a junior high game by putting up 48. Then as a sophomore, he recorded 36 points, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists all in one game. What? Oh, <laughs> Okay, so he did say junior high, but what? As a he, wait, them stats he just said. He said that he did that as a sophomore. That brother had to be on varsity. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way that brother couldn't be on no JV doing that. He had to be on varsity because after that game, you had to get off JV. <laughs> You had to get off. Record for most points in a junior high game by putting up 48. Then as a sophomore, he recorded 36 points, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists all in one game. Magic was making a name for himself, literally. This triple-double led to a writer from the Lansing State Journal referring to him as Magic for the very first time, and it became one of the most well-known nicknames in sports history. College life. Magic still had a ways to go in turning the sport he loved into a way to provide for his family. Even though he was a two-time All-State selection and a McDonald's All-American in high school, he needed to prove himself all over again at the collegiate level to potentially one day hear his name called at the NBA draft. But being referred to as one of the best players to ever come out of the state of Michigan. Magic had his pick of the litter when it came time to choose a college. He landed on Michigan State after deciding staying close to home was important to him. Magic actually didn't consider this to be a launch pad for the NBA. Instead, he focused on becoming a TV commentator by majoring in communications, which isn't all that shocking when you consider his outgoing personality. But his plan B wouldn't hold him back. Magic thrived on the hardwood for the Spartans and quickly became one of college basketball's brightest stars. Hey, that's good though, Magic Johnson. Like, he was actually in the school too, as well as playing basketball. Because I know one thing if I went to college in today's game, how basketball is, if I went to college with Magic Johnson talent, I wouldn't even be thinking about school. <laughs> I wouldn't even be thinking about school. So that's so that's good with Magic. But I'm saying if I had talents like Magic Johnson in basketball, oh, there's no way I'm thinking about school. <laughs> there's no way. I would be thinking about hooping all day. I'm, I probably wouldn't even go to class. I'll fail every class and go to the league. <laughs> Dead serious though. Honestly, if the NBA if the NBA still allowed that, I probably would have came straight out of high school. <laughs> I would have came straight out. I I would even went to college. What? If I had talent like Magic Johnson, what? Oh my god, I would even be thinking about school. So that's good. He was thinking about that. He was a real student athlete. Cause I know I know myself. I would not even be thinking about school. I'm like, well, I'm gonna get this NBA check. <laughs> That's what I would be thinking. That's funny. But no, oh no, Magic Johnson was nice. Magic Johnson was a dog. I've done the hardwood for the Spartans and quickly became one of college basketball's brightest stars. As a freshman, he averaged 17 points, 7.9 rebounds, and 7.4 assists and made it to the March Madness Elite Eight. Sophomore year, he put up nearly identical numbers, but this time, he led Sparty all the way to a national title. It was the most watched college basketball game ever. Magic outdueled Larry Bird and was named the Final Four's most outstanding player. A star is born. 
I realized a lot from like the players from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They stayed in college, but then they left after they graduated or they left after their junior year. I was curious, like, did the NBA like still have like that rule they can go straight from high school or they can play one year in college then go to the NBA? Because I'm like, or maybe just the players just wanted to stay in school. Because I'm just curious. Because I thought like back in the day, like during these times, you can go straight from high school. I'm just curious. So if you know, can you tell me in the comments below? I'm just curious. Because I realized that about like a lot of players from back then, a lot of them stayed in school late. Like they left after their junior year or they left after they graduated. Because I know, like I said, after freshman year, if I average 17, 7, and 7, I'm going straight to the league after that. <laughs> I'm going straight to the league after that. Oh, especially they had me like a top three pick too. Oh yeah, I'm for sure was going. <laughs> I for sure was going. I wouldn't even be thinking about staying. Of course, I know in college, you're going to win a championship. We made it to Elite Eight, and we lost. Uh, oh, well, I tried my best. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Bird and was named the Final Four's most outstanding player. A star is born. Magic's rookie season ended up being one for the books, but first, he had to make the league. After dominating college basketball for two seasons, Magic decided to enter the 1979 NBA draft. Possessing such a unique skill set for someone standing at 6'9 and coming off a national title, it was no surprise that Magic went number one overall. And while top picks usually join organizations who have fallen on tough times, he was drafted by the Lakers. The Lakers were coming off three straight playoff appearances and only had the first pick as compensation for losing a free agent a few years earlier. But being the number one pick and playing in a city like LA for a team consistently reaching the postseason, there were sky-high expectations for Magic. The pressure didn't phase Magic one bit. He managed to live up to those and then some. As a rookie, he averaged 18 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds, and 7.3 assists per game and was named to the All-Star team. And if that wasn't enough, he was a starter, a very rare and prestigious honor for a rookie. In addition to individual success, Magic helped the Lakers reach the finals after going 60-22 and in the regular season. Then when LA was up 3-2 in the series against the 76ers, Magic's running mate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was ruled out for Game 6 due to injury. People counted out the Lakers because of this. They had no faith in Magic. But Magic was used to overcoming tough times, and with his family counting on him, he had no choice but to rise to the occasion. He led the Lakers that night to a 123-107 win as he put up one of the greatest stat lines in finals history. 42 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals. He was named NBA Finals MVP, becoming the only rookie to ever do so. That's Oh my god, wait, hold up. This man probably had one of the most blessed NBA careers I ever saw in my life. <laughs> what? That man was blessed. <laughs> that is insane. That is amazing. Wait, hold up. This man got drafted to a team that made the playoffs three years prior this dude got drafted to the with the best center in nba history as your running mate you average 18 7 and 7 in your rookie year that is excellent and you started you made the all-star team the lakers went 60 and 22 with you starting you went to the nba finals kareem was out you got a whole triple double and you won nba finals mvp as a rookie you ain't having a better rookie year than that no one's having a better rookie year than that that's never happening again what this man really is the greatest point guard ever what Magic Johnson was the truth. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Oh my goodness, that makes no sense. History, 42 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals. He was named NBA Finals MVP, becoming the only rookie to ever do so. Oh, he almost got triple-double. Seven assists, he almost got ten assists. That's a triple-double. I don't care. <laughs> That's almost got triple-double. That's crazy. That sweet taste of victory didn't last long because Magic's second season in the league was one plagued by injury. He suffered torn cartilage in his left knee and was forced to miss 45 games. This didn't stop the Lakers from paying him, though. They recognized they had a one-of-a-kind talent in Magic, so they decided to give him a one-of-a-kind contract. The two parties agreed to a 25-year, $25 million contract Contract, which at the time is the highest paying contract in sports history. Showtime with a recovered. What? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? This is probably the most shocked I ever been about a player in a video. This might be 25 years, 25 million. Of course, I know that money back then is totally different from money now. But that's still crazy though. 25 years? Bro. <laughs> what? 25 year contract? This video get more crazy the more it go on. <laughs>
Man. Okay, we know you hurt Magic, but here's a 25-year contract. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Mag Magic Johnson. He was definitely one of a kind. This man was different. Which at the time is the highest paying contract in sports history. Showtime. With a recovered knee and healthy bank account, it was time for Magic to lead LA back to the promised land. After a disappointing season in which they got knocked out in the first round of the playoffs, Magic looked like himself again. He nearly averaged a triple-double with 18.6 points, 9.6 rebounds, 9.5 assists, and a league-leading 2.7 steals per game that year. He also joined Will Chamberlain and Oscar Robinson as the only players to ever record 700 points, 700 rebounds, and 700 assists all in one season. Thanks to Magic's stellar play, the Lakers found themselves back in the finals, where they would again knock off the 76ers in six games. After recording a series-clinching triple-double, Magic was named Finals MVP for a second time. But the following year, Philly would finally get their revenge on Magic and the Lake Show. They were again facing off in the finals, but things were different this time. The Lakers were riddled with injuries, with James Worthy, Bob McAdoo, and Norm Nixon all hurt in that series. We may call him Magic, but he couldn't take on the 76ers alone. Revenge became a recurring theme, as did the Lakers making the finals. Hold up, I was about to say, of course he had the 76ers number and they got him back the last time. But the 76ers was nice with Julius Irving and Moses Malone. They went to the finals three straight times? Well, probably not three straight, but they went to the finals three times? Julius Irving and Moses Malone was nice. Julius Irving, like, from back in the day, he's, like, probably one of, like, my favorite players to look at. And Moses Malone, I think he's one of the most underrated players in NBA history. Like, no one talks about Moses Malone. He was a beast. Them 76ers teams was nice. They kept, they kept going to the finals. 76ers alone. Revenge became a recurring theme, as did the Lakers making the finals. After leading LA to a third consecutive trip to the championship series, Magic ran into an old foe in Larry Bird, who in an epic seven-game series avenged his loss to Magic in the NCAA national title game. But this just made Magic hungrier to win more than ever. A year later, the Lakers ran into the Celtics in the finals again, winning this time in six games and reclaiming their throne, as Magic averaged 18.3 points and 14 assists per game in the series. After four straight finals appearances, the 85-86 season saw the Lakers fall in the conference finals, bringing an end to their impressive streak. The following season, with people wondering whether Magic was over the hill and the Lakers dynasty had come to a close, Magic averaged a career career high 23.9 points per game, while adding in 12.2 assists on his way to winning his first regular season MVP award. This is insane. <laughs> Magic Johnson was the truth. This man was ridiculous. All I keep hearing, a trip to the finals, this guy almost averaging a triple-double, and this guy winning finals MVP. That's all I keep hearing. Like, he'll lose a couple times, and he just bounce right back and start hooping again. <laughs> Magic John, I'm sorry, this man is the greatest point guard ever. I'm sorry, he is. But it's just so funny. After all of that, he just won his first MVP. What? <laughs> what? Why you wasn't giving it to him before? <laughs> What? That man is going to the finals every year, getting finals MVP pretty much. And he just got, after all of that, this, <laughs> this man, oh yeah, he just got his first MVP. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. This, this video is actually hilarious, but Magic Johnson, he was the truth. In my opinion, he top five player in NBA history. He top five. This man, ridiculous. Magic Johnson was the truth in 12.2 assists on his way to winning his first regular season MVP award. It wasn't just a regular season to remember for Magic. His dominance extended into the postseason, where he showed he wasn't ready to give up his crown, as he added another title and finals MVP award to his growing legacy. Magic then had enough championship rings to fill his hand. Magic would go on to make the finals in two of the following three seasons and bring home two more regular season league MVP awards. Hollywood ending. We th like I said, that man probably had the most blessed NBA career I ever saw in my life. I know he got a room with all his accolades. <laughs> he got to. Oh, yeah, I got the championship trophies. Over, well, I got the, my championship rings over here. Over here, I have my MVPs. On this, uh, this side of the room, I have my NBA Finals MVPs. I have my All-Star Games MVPs. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got my jersey at Michigan State up here when I won the national championship. I got my I got my Lakers jerseys up here when I won the championship. 
Like, this man, I know he got a room. Magic Johnson got to have a room with his accolades. He had to. He had to. And bring home two more regular season league MVP awards. Hollywood ending. We thought Magic would continue to win awards and compete for titles for years to come. But then, everything changed in an instant. While undergoing a physical prior to the 91-92 season, it was discovered that Magic's life would change forever. He tested positive for HIV. In a press conference on November 7, 1991, Magic made the news public and announced that he would be immediately retiring from the NBA. The news transcended the sporting world. It was all people could focus on. More than a decade later in 2004, it was named ESPN's seventh most memorable moment of the previous 25 years. Then, even though Magic was retired, fans voted him as a starter for the 92 NBA All-Star Game. Magic picked up exactly where he left off, filling up the stat sheet with 25 points, 9 assists, and 5 rebounds on his way to being named the game's MVP. Being named a starter demonstrated just how much fans and his fellow NBA peers respected him, and his performance proved just how good he was. The same should be said for his inclusion in the 92 U.S. Olympic basketball team roster, better known as the Dream Team. There was zero debating that Magic belonged on one of the greatest, if not the greatest, basketball teams of all time. Following a brief stint as coach of the Lakers, Magic unretired and laced him up in the purple and gold one more time time during the 95-96 season. Even at 36, Magic made his impact on the court, averaging 14.6 points, 6.9 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game in 32 appearances that season. He retired after the season ended, saying, I'm going out on my own terms, something I couldn't say when I aborted a comeback in 1992. Legacy. Magic the one thing I liked about Magic Johnson when he played basketball was that how much joy and how much happiness he played in the game. Like, I think that's like just a perfect example of life. You try to do what you love and try to have the most fun doing it. Like, that's that's why I try to carry over in my life. Like, I try to do what I love and I, and I have fun doing it, enjoying the process and just try to be the best I can be at my craft. That's what I really liked about Magic Johnson. He always had a smile on his face on the court. You can tell he had fun. He always had a smile on his face, but he was crazy competitive as well. I really wish to see like how well his career went if he played let's just say he played like 15 20 years he for sure would have had a lot more accolades in my opinion honestly probably probably at this fourth or fifth year in the league he was the first battle hall of famer honestly he was <laughs> he was magic johnson was the truth one of the greatest players ever in my opinion top five player ever that man was gifted at basketball something i couldn't say when i aborted a comeback in 1992 legacy Magic's resume was about as lengthy as they come. He was a five-time NBA champ, three-time finals MVP, three-time regular season MVP, 12-time All-Star, two-time All-Star game MVP, and nine-time All-NBA first-teamer. Over his 13-year career, he led the Lakers to the finals a remarkable nine times, while averaging 59 wins per season. Such sustained excellence is rare in any sport. But he didn't just rack up personal achievements and bring his team success. Magic transformed the way the game was played. At 6'9", he broke the mold of what was viewed as the ideal point guard, showing that position didn't have to be reserved for just the small guys. Magic played a positionless type of basketball that was not normal back then, filling in wherever his team needed it. His combination of size, athleticism, and ability was unheard of. He paved the way for and inspired generations to come. Guys like LeBron James and LaMelo Ball, his fast-paced style and prevalence of flashy plays earned him and the Lakers the nickname of Showtime. To this day, Magic is still referred to as one of the best, if not the best, point guards the game of basketball has ever seen. Respect to Magic Johnson. Respect to Magic Johnson. Greatest point guard ever. I really did enjoy this video. This was a great video. This is probably one of my favorite videos i done. Like, I really did enjoy this video. Shout out to Magic Johnson. I have so much respect for him. As a player, how he treat people, business savvy. He works on his craft. He put in the work and he enjoy doing it. That's one thing about life. You may have some downfalls, but how you bounce back from them. Every day is not going to be great, but how you bounce back from like the downfalls in your life, that's what makes life great. Because once the once you bounce back, no, no one can stop you. It don't matter what people say about you, how people treat you. It don't matter. Once you build like that confidence and like resilience in yourself, you're unstoppable. I really did enjoy this video. I really did. So drop down y'all thoughts in the comments below about Magic Johnson. What you like about his game the most? What was your favorite Magic Johnson moment? What was your favorite game from Magic Johnson? Yeah, so just drop your thoughts about Magic Johnson. I'm curious to see what you all think. So if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you can get an alert for every time I post. You'll be the first to know. And I hope everyone have a blessed day. I'm out.